The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement. Hello and welcome to the ASCO Guidelines podcast series brought to you by the ASCO Podcast Network, a collection of nine programs covering a range of educational and scientific content and offering enriching insight into the world of cancer care. You can find all the shows, including this one, at podcast.asco.org. My name is Brittany Harvey and today I'm interviewing Dr. Jun Ma from Sun Yat-sen University Cancer Center, State Key Laboratory of Oncology in South China, Collaborative Innovation Center for Cancer Medicine, Guangdong Key Laboratory of Nasopharyngeal Carcinoma Diagnosis and Therapy, in Guangzhou, and the Chinese Society of Clinical Oncology. Author on Chemotherapy in Combination with Radiotherapy for Definitive Intent Treatment of Stage 2 to 4A Nasopharyngeal Carcinoma, Chinese Society of Clinical Oncology, and American Society of Clinical Oncology Guideline. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Ma. Yes, First, I'd like to note that ASCO takes great care in the development of its guidelines and ensuring that the ASCO conflict of interest policy is followed for each guideline. The full conflict of interest information for this guideline panel is available online with the publication of the guideline in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Dr. Ma, do you have any relevant disclosures that are directly related to this guideline topic? Thank you, uh, Brittany. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Jun Ma from the Xinxin University Cancer Center in China and I don't have any potential conflict of interest related to this guideline topic. Great, thank you. Then can you give us a general overview of what this guideline covers? Yes. This guideline aims to highlight significant clinical questions about the chemotherapy in combination with the radiotherapy for the definitive treatment of stage 2 to stage 4A MPC nasopharyngeal carcinoma. It will clarify the fundamental principles of the radiotherapy planning and how to combine chemo with radiotherapy for its patient's success. Great, then this guideline covers five clinical questions. I'd like to review those key recommendations for our listeners. First, what does the guideline state regarding radiotherapy for patients with stage 2 to 4A nasopharyngeal carcinoma? Yes. For all nasopharyngeal carcinoma patients, we supported the use of IMRT. Summarizing the current evidence, we don't recommend the use of other techniques such as 2D or even 3D radiotherapy. If IMRT is not available at that spot, patients should be transferred to the institution that could implement it MRT whenever possible. For all NPC patients, a prescribed dose of, of 70 gray in 33 or 35 fractions delivered over seven weeks should be offered. It should be noted that the radiation dose may be adjusted according to the tumor volume and its response to the chemotherapy. In terms of the target delineation, we recommended to follow several existing concept guidelines. Thank you. Okay, then what is recommended regarding chemotherapy sequence in addition to radiotherapy? Okay, generally speaking, a patients with low disease burden, such as the lower end category or clinical stage, could receive lower intensity of chemotherapy. For T2 and lymph node negative patients, chemotherapy is not routinely recommended, while for T1 or 2 N1 patients, 
concurrent chemotherapy may be offered, particularly for T2N1 patients. For local regional advanced disease, except T3 lymph node negative patients, we recommended the use of the concurrent chemotherapy with induction or adjuvant chemotherapy. It should be noted that there is a lack of head-to-head -head trials comparing induction chemo plus concurrent chemo radiotherapy versus concurrent chemo radiotherapy plus adjuvant chemo. Thus, which sequence performs better in the contemporary area remains uncertain. Finally, for T3 lymph node negative patients, concurrent chemo radiotherapy should be offered. Adjuvant or induction chemotherapy may also be offered if there is uh, adverse features such as the Buckley tumor volumes or high EBV DNA copying numbers. Great. Then you just mentioned some chemoradiotherapy regimens. So for patients with nasopharyngeal carcinoma receiving concurrent chemoradiotherapy, what are the recommended chemotherapy options? Okay. For all MPC patients without contraindications, concurrent cisplatin should be offered along the radiotherapy. Weekly use of the cisplatin with 40 mg per square meter or 3 weekly with 8 or 200 mg per square meter is acceptable. We recommend it the cisplatin dose should be attempted to achieve a cumulative dose of at least 200 mg per square meter. For patients with contra Indications to cisplatin, nail duct planting, carpal planting, or oxalate planting may be alternative choice. For patients with a control uh, indications to cisplatin based chemotherapy, pyromidine, such as 5FU with concurrent chemotherapy, also may be offered. Thank you. Great. And then for patients with nasopharyngeal carcinoma receiving induction chemotherapy, what are those recommended options? Yes. For all patients receiving induction or adjuvant chemotherapy, plantain-based induction regimes should be offered in terms of induction chemo such as GP, TPF, TPPF, and PX regimes are recommended. The induction regimes should be administered every three weeks for a total of three cycles or at least a minimum two cycles. If the patient receives induction chemotherapy, chemo radiotherapy should be commenced within 21 to 28 days from the first day of the last cycle of induction chemotherapy. Great. And then for the final set of recommendations, for patients with nasopharyngeal carcinoma receiving adjuvant chemotherapy, what are those recommended chemotherapy options? Considering the adjuvant chemotherapy, the choice of the adjuvant regimes were much fewer than those of induction chemotherapy according to current evidence. PF regime administer every four weeks for a total of three cycles uh, is recommended. If with a counterindiction to this blending, carbo blending may be combined with 5-FU. It should be noted that for all patients receiving adjuvant chemotherapy and with a counterindiction to platinum containing chemotherapy, the use of non platinum based regimes remain experimental at this time and should not be offered routinely 
outside of the context of a clinical trial. The main difference between the recommendation for the induction and adjuvant chemotherapy are primarily due to the number of the randomized trials, in which there are few studies regarding the adjuvant chemotherapy in nasal pharyngeal carcinoma. Thank you. Thank you for reviewing each of those recommendations. So then, what is the importance of this guideline, and how will it impact clinical practice in patients with nasopharyngeal carcinoma? For nasopharyngeal carcinoma, it has extremely uneven geographic global distribution. More than of the seventy of this the new diagnosis wild world in the two thousand eighteen years occurred in the east and、uh, the southeast Asia. Therefore, nasal pharyngeal carcinoma remains a significant public health problem in these regions, which emphasizes the significance of this guideline for providers and patients from the endemic area. For my point of view, one of the novel features of this. Joint guideline is that it was developed through the international collaboration with the regional features. Ex- experts from the Cisco and ESCO shared interpretation of the evidence, while accounting for the organizing national or cultural adversity of different regions. In brief. The guideline provides the guidelines on how to plan radio therapy and when and how to add a chemotherapy. Through the interpretation, predicting the guideline, care providers can avoid over or under treatment and provide the most suitable chemo radio therapy for MPC patients. Besides. For the patients, they could receive the most、uh, suitable treatment with the balance of the efficiency and the quality of the life. Thank you. Great, definitely. We appreciate the collaboration between the American Society of Clinical Oncology and the Chinese Society of Clinical Oncology. So, thank you so much for your work on these guidelines, and thank you for your time today, Dr. Ma. Thank you. And thank you to all of our listeners for tuning into the ASCO Guidelines podcast series. To read the full guideline, go to www.asco.org/head-neck-cancer-guidelines. You can also find many of our guidelines and interactive resources in the free ASCO Guidelines app, available in iTunes or the Google Play Store. If you have enjoyed what you've heard today, please rate and review the podcast, and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. 